Welcome to Exceptional Leadership. I'm your host, Anita Brooks. Though my focus is primarily pointed to leadership at an organizational level, let me assure you, most of what I share will translate to almost any aspect of life. Just tweak the info to fit your leadership role. Because whether you approach my content as a corporate leader, middle manager, small business owner, entrepreneur, or as a family member or friend, you are influencing someone. The question is, are you influencing well, exceptionally well? So let's take courage, exercise wisdom, and humbly invest in the people we are called to influence. Join me on a quest, not for perfection, but absolutely for exceptional leadership. Well, I'm always interested in what people share or the feedback that they give me. And one thing that I've been hearing recently is as much as people enjoy some of the interviews, they'd like to hear more of me just talking about particular topics and things. So just to let you know, I've heard you and I am going to start speaking that way. So I will still have the occasional interview guests, but I will do more topical conversation or or monologues, if you will, on the podcast. So another thing that I've been getting requests for is people want to know more about what I do as a matter of my P4 power coaching practice. So today I'm going to give you just a shorty episode. And in this, though, we're going to talk about a very positive thing that I encourage a lot of my clients to do. But first, I have to go back in time and I have to give credit where credit is due. And I want to talk about a manager that I had in my very young work life who taught me this philosophy. And it's something that I not only have tried to carry into my own leadership practices, but then to pass on and teach others as well. So when I was, my goodness, I was like 17, 18 years old, I worked at a Montgomery Ward store. Now Montgomery Ward is not even open anymore. So this really dates me. But let me tell you something, I learned a lot of very beneficial things from that experience. And one of those was working under the direction of a man named Jack Carden. And Jack was the manager of the lawn and garden and sporting goods department that I worked in. And Jack was one of those guys that, I mean, he could be tough and gruff and and sometimes he really appeared that way from the outside until you got to know him. But what I learned very quickly about Jack was he appeared tough and gruff because he took his job seriously and usually only when he felt like he needed to hold someone accountable, things weren't being done properly properly. There were uh, laxes in some of the, the work behaviors and habits. And so he wasn't a bad guy at all. He was just someone who knew what it took to get the job done. And he had that expectation and he let you know it. But for those of uh, people who didn't work directly for Jack, they didn't understand the other side of him. Jack could be fun. Now, again, not so much on the job most of the time, although every once in a while he let his guard down. But he was someone who, as much as he held you to the line, he also was not afraid to give a compliment. He did not hold back when he caught you doing something right. So he wasn't someone who was constantly looking to catch people doing things wrong. And that parlays a lot into what I'm going to share with you today. So one of the things that Jack did was on a pretty weekly basis, we had what I'll call a go gang go meeting. And I looked forward to those go gang go meetings as did the other people that I worked alongside. And when we had the meetings, they were short and brief. They were concise. There was an objective to them, which is very important. I'm not one that ever encourages people to meet just to meet. You need to always have an objective in mind that you want to accomplish. But what we did pretty much was we, we you know, there sometimes was a topic that he needed to talk about or give us some quick training on. But often it was just like, let's share a win and let's share something that we need to improve on. And 
there was not only a learning and an education and an, a communication. You know, we learned about things that frankly sometimes would have an impact on us, maybe not directly so much, but indirectly. But we learned about it because we had the communication in our Go Gang Go meetings. Um, the other thing though that happened was it was very inspirational. So sometimes maybe we didn't just learn about an issue that needed to be addressed or that had been addressed. But sometimes we learned about how people went about doing very successful and positive things in their day-to-day jobs. And and some of us were able to uh, do similar things. But we accomplished that because we just went around and each person shared those things. And so that's something that I really encourage and inspire the leaders that I work with and the clients that I am coaching with to do as well, to have their own Go Gang Go meetings. And there are a lot of things that take place. Everybody does them a little bit differently. But I thought I'd just share a handful of ways that I've seen them be extremely successful for my clients. You know, I have one manager that she calls it the rose and the thorn exercise. And so they go around and each person shares a rose, which is a very positive thing. And each person shares a thorn, something that they're challenged by. Uh, Some call them a challenge and a win. But whatever you call it, it is essentially following that same philosophy that I learned from Jack. And that is each person shares a negative and a positive. I do find that it works much more productively if we start with the negative and we end with the positive. Um, there is something, again, more uplifting and energizing and inspirational about that. But it also deepens the communication and understanding and it bonds people together and it's subtle in its impact, but it's powerful. So if you don't do something like this, again, it usually only takes 10, 15 minutes a week. But I will tell you, I think it's very worthwhile to do this. It allows you to celebrate milestones together. You know, sometimes we get so busy or or we're involved in busy work that we don't take a breath and remember that we're all human beings and celebrate together. And I can tell you that when you do that, it certainly helps you work through the tense and more stressful times together and do it in a healthier way. Um, It helps us support each other uh, when we understand that maybe someone is dealing with a difficulty or if we have been able to celebrate to maybe come alongside and, and offer them support and encouragement. Another thing that can come from doing the Go Gang Go meetings is, you know, maybe it's uh, something instructional. And so it offers you a quick hit way of covering a topic just with everyone at one time. You know, I think um, one that comes up so often with my clients is telephone etiquette. It seems like it's, it's crazy. It's almost like we're going backwards in society as far as employees understanding what good telephone etiquette is and how to use that uh, proficiently in their jobs today. So there's a lot of need for just very detailed, like I think about uh, the importance of taking down the details on a telephone message pad. May sound simple enough, you'd be amazed at how many employees leave a lot of those blank. and, And some of that can be Who was it that called? Who are they with? Uh, Was there a particular message they wanted to leave? And oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many leaders express frustration because their people can't seem to get a simple telephone number. Um, So going through something like telephone etiquette instructions can be really good in a Go Gang Go meeting. Uh, Sometimes, you know, leaders can feel like they're alone. There's so much to do and it can often feel impossible And many, without realizing it, can develop Lone Ranger syndrome where they feel like they have to either do it all themselves or micromanage things. But when you begin to develop the camaraderie and the collaborative spirit that comes with the Go Gang Go meeting, it can change that for you. And you can feel less alone and trust evolves. And oftentimes you find that there are willing helping hands that can help lift some of that load off of you as a leader. So for you, that that can be a beneficial thing too. 
Another thing that can often come from Go Gang Go meetings is people over and over and over again in my work express to me the dissatisfaction that they feel, the sadness even, they just don't feel heard. And a Go Gang Go meeting, something as simple as what's your rose, what's your thorn, uh, what's your challenge of the week, what's your win of the week, that can help people to feel as if they're heard, as if their concerns and their celebrations matter to other people. Sometimes it offers opportunities for us to express appreciation and gratitude that we might miss otherwise. And let me tell you, the world needs more of that. Companies need more of that. And frontline folks working in these jobs need that. And you definitely will get more productivity if you build people up versus tearing them down. So a Go Gang Go meeting can be a really great platform to do that very type of thing. Another idea that can come from or, or another, uh, I guess, outcome that can come from a Go Gang Go meeting is identifying champions who will be the hero of causes or projects or changes that need to take place. And it's amazing. Again, you don't have to spend great volumes of time to do this, but just a quick conversation that you as the leader guide and facilitate can help bring to light some of these needs. And if you have the objective going into it that you want to identify these champions, then Sometimes you can get people to volunteer. Sometimes you can designate or delegate, but either way you can get the job done. And when people are tasked with being the champion of something, let me tell you something, they have buy-in, they have engagement, they have skin in the game. So that can be a very good boost to getting some things done that maybe have been languishing for a while. So use that maybe uh, the Go Gang Go concept as an impetus to make sure that there's follow through on important tasks. Another thing that you can accomplish through a Go Gang Go meeting is you can review the top priorities. It's interesting to me how easy it is to lose sight of what the most important things are that we should spend our days doing. You know, many times in my coaching practice, I will ask people, Do I'll go through this interview process, and part of that is I will often ask them, so what would you estimate are the three most profitable tasks that you do in a week's time? And sometimes people have to really think about that because I'm not talking about busy work and I'm very clear to explain that, but things that actually help strengthen the net profits of the company. What would you say those top three things are? And then once people are able to come up with that, then I ask them, so on average, what would you guesstimate is the percentage of time that you get to spend in a week working in those areas? Well, by going through that simple exercise with folks, what has happened many times is people have been able to identify some invisible drains that are stealing their money, time, energy as they're being pulled off to do these things that frankly are not reinforcing or strengthening the bottom line or the net profits of the company. And they're able to either stop doing them or shift them to a more appropriate a more appropriate place uh, or get them evaluated by leadership. There's many things that can occur that can be really beneficial eventually to the bottom line by looking at what our most profitable tasks are. That can be the type of a conversation you can have in a Go Gang Go meeting. Uh, And it doesn't mean you have to solve it all in one fell swoop. Remember, Go Gang Go is meant to be a very concise, short, brief encounter. But what you can do in a Go Gang Go is you can give people an assignment where they go back and they, they reflect on, they think on, they brainstorm, they maybe write out some notes on these things, but it solidifies in their minds the needs and maybe some changes that need to take place so they can give more time, energy, and attention to those profit-bearing 
work habits or work projects that they have. So that can be very positive for folks. But then once they do that individually, what I especially like to encourage in a Go Gang Go meeting is that folks then look at that as a group and say, so what as a group are our top priorities? And then making sure that they give the appropriate amounts of time, energy, and attention to those so that They are strengthening the organization with what they do and not getting pulled aside into busy work. So those are just a few of the ideas. Um, uh, Some other things too, I I remember back that I've done that have been very positive. Um, Sometimes in a go gang go, we've just done it in five minutes or less. Frankly, there wasn't a lot of real heavy duty to cover. And again, let's not just meet to meet or extend the meeting just because we said it was going to be 15 minutes. But I've shared an inspirational or motivational quote from someone historical or someone that's maybe recognizable to folks that can make a difference. You know, it's easy these days. We have Google go and find those type of things for your folks or something else that I do with my clients is, um, and I actually have a form for this. You can email me at info at Anita Brooks.com. If you like a copy, I'll give it to you for free, but I'm a firm believer, like I was saying about Jack, in recognizing people, catching them doing things right, not always trying to catch them doing things wrong. So I have a form. It's a recognition form. It's a one pager, but it's I caught you doing something exceptionally well. That kind of positive reinforcement can really motivate people and it can cause them to do more of the good things that you want them to do. And I will tell you, when you focus on those areas, it does set you above. You become exceptional in your leadership practice and you start to feel more trustworthy with your people that you're leading. And and it feels like you have more appreciation, like they matter when you begin to recognize and acknowledge them in that way. So these are just a few ideas. Uh, You can come up with your own. But if you're not doing it, I highly recommend a weekly Go Gang Go meetings. Remember, Go Gang Go should be a positive reinforcement activity. It should not be about beating people up, calling people out, knocking people down. It should be about building up strengthening, reinforcing, and motivating everybody to do all of the great things we do that lead to exceptional outcomes. And if you will institute some kind of a go gang go meeting of your own, watch your people become more lit up, more engaged, more bought in, in ways that you need. And it's going to shine a light on you as an exceptional leader. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Exceptional Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Anita Brooks. And I just want to remind you of a truth. If you are not leading at the level that you want to be at, remember, it is never too late for a fresh start with fresh faith. You can start today. You can start making a difference. You can help the world become a better place. You can begin to lead with intent, your family, your friends, the people you work with, your community, in your church, in our nation, across the planet. Whatever opportunities come your way, remember that did not happen by accident. And by stepping up and leading exceptionally well, you will help fulfill the purpose you were created for.